Hello my friends, welcome again to my video channel. Today we start a new project. JST245 Shortwave transceiver including 6 meter 50 megahertz from Japanese radio corporation. I think roughly 20 years old or so. In those days it was a very uh, high sophisticated transceiver. Still it is today. The owner uh, brought it to me and told me that there's a problem. After mm, 10 minutes or so, he told me that the transceiver gets a periodically switch off. Half a second or so. And with uh, increasing time of operation, the times between this uh, switching off gets always shorter. Could be a power supply problem or anywhere else. First I will wait until it happens and then we can see what to do. While we are waiting we can have a look at it. There's a band switch 1.8 MHz up to 50 MHz. All modes SSB, CW, FM, AM. The filter obviously is installed, a white filter and the intermediate filter, I don't know what it is, I think it is 3 kHz or so. Narrow is obviously not installed. RF amp attenuator, AGC a lot of switches for noise planker, notch, whatever we think, Vox, compressor. Here we have the bandwidth tuning and setting. Bandwidth control and passband tuning, passband shift. Shift it what exit. Three antennas can be selected. Some interface connections. Uh, electronic here off on. Okay. Well, you see, it's a very good equipped. High-tech transceiver, but obviously there is a problem. Okay, now it starts. But we see no display. The, the AF disappears. This could be a general problem in the power supply. If only one voltage would disappear from the power supply due to a short on one of the boards. I switch it off now, not necessary to ruin the transceiver. When we would have a problem inside the transceiver on a board, on the AF board or PLL board or so, we wouldn't lose all information, all what the display and the sound, but it's generally ticking down. Also, relay is clicking, so I assume there is a problem in the power supply. So we will, we will first focus now on the power supply. This transceiver is an interesting concept. It has a main and a sub power supply. Both are switched mode power supplies. The main power supply produces 60 volt with the AC input. 220 or 110 or 115. The 60 volt output is fed to the PA. We can see it here that's the PA unit. And it is fed to the sub power supply. And the sub power supply generates some voltages from it. It is 13.8 uh, volt, 9 volt, and 5 volt. And these voltages are uh, distributed here to several connectors, but it's always the same. You can see the principle here. The main power supply has here the AC input, 115 or 230. There's a bridge which can be set according to the input voltage. When we have 115 input voltage, then this circuit here acts as a voltage doubler. The, uh, one side of the AC is connected to the center between the two capacitors and we have here a voltage uh, doubler. In case of 230 volts, we have here this bridge open and then there's only uh, a bridge rectifier. 
that's the output 60 volt and here's a fan control that's it this main power supply supply is 60 volt and not more the sub power supply has here the 60 volt input and it generates 13.8 9 and 5 volt and these voltages are fed to various connectors and they are fed out to the uh, various uh, units but it's always the same the 13.8 volt is always the same and then 5 volt or the 9 volt they're all connected to these points this will be the first uh, attempt i have to do i will check whether the voltages here are stable what's happening what's going on there to see uh, whether the main or the sub power supply is not working in the service manual there's a rather good description the main and sub power supply are obviously on the left side top and bottom cover has to be removed here we have the front panel this is a power supply first we can remove the uh, main power supply this one and when it is removed then we have the sub power supply of course a lot of wires as shown here has to be removed we do it first i will check uh, the power supplies and I have an idea how to do this but this is the next step the power supply the main power supply is out I removed some screws then I could could it flip out this is the second the sub power supply this is the main supply my first intention was here to disconnect the loads the red wires to see uh, what I can measure here and to load it with a, an external load and to operate this main supply separated from the rest of the transceiver and then I saw this I show it a little bit closer in the camera screw is missing this integrated circuit has no thermal contact to the heatsink don't know what happened but there is no screw this circuit is the IC3 and the IC3 is a 15 volt stabilizer but with this one takes from the secondary of the transformer of the SMPS takes a part of the voltage and uh, makes a 15 volt out of it it's a supply voltage for the integrated circuit which controls the four power fets and other parts and this circuit here has no heatsink this would explain the behavior that after some minutes, 10 minutes, it gets too hot, shuts down. Such uh, circuits have an integrated over temperature protection. But why it switches only off for a fraction of a second and then comes back, that's not clear to me. But this is of course not okay. I will repair it, but it's not so easy. I have seen there's a, uh, the bolt is broken and there is some um a part of the screw inside the thread part of the thread is inside and i have no access on the rear side to to remove the screw so i fear i have to open a little bit more or i can use a long nose plier to take it out but i've seen a second thing i found a resistor which looks rather roasted or barbecued this one the solder connection here the pins are rather hmm, dark not shiny as it should be they have a halo around and th obviously this resistor gets brutal hot the others look very well no problems but this one is a smaller one from the size it gets hot don't know why um, 
Let's have a look into the schematic, what it is. The resistor which gets so hot is this one. R27, 68K and 3 watt. On one side it's connected to the rectified lines voltage. In our case we have 230 volt or so. And the peak voltage by this rectifier, bridge rectifier and the filter caps is 320 volt or so. And 320 volt, 68K, it's uh, roughly uh, 1.5 watt permanent power. Okay, it's within the specified 3 watts, but I don't think that this is really a 3 watt uh, resistor. It looks a little bit smaller. And on the other side, the voltage is nearly zero because this voltage is uh, pulled down to, to ground connection via this, uh, via this and this uh, transistor, which is there to control the uh, driver feed. It's a driver for the uh, for this transistor and here the voltage has to be nearly zero otherwise the gate is damaged so the uh, sorry the power loss here is rather high and after some struggles i got the uh, <coughs> the bolt the screw out it's a plastic screw not a metal screw and it's clear because this i see here has to be isolated the reason is this um, tap here is grounded but the ground is a negative of the rectified DC and this is not the ground of the chassis. The rectified DC of the mains voltage has a different potential than this one. So there is an isolation between and the screw but the plastic screw is not good for this purpose. I use a metal screw and I use some such of these isolation uh, pieces here they are they are for m3 <coughs> with distance holders i use such a thing i have several uh, types uh, i hope there is a the right one available so i will uh, replace it with a metal screw m3 to get it uh, same as we have okay here we don't have it as i see it's, uh, the transistors are isolated I said okay but here I will use a different version not the original one with this uh, plastic screw the new screw is in with this isolation tab and then I make a, a short test the screw of course is grounded but the tap of the voltage regulator the, the 15 volt regulator and also this pin is not grounded here we have ground here we have no ground so it's okay and now i can do a new start a restart and check whether it's okay now the unit is reassembled the power supply is in i started the timer one minute left so let's see whether the problem is solved now or not and of course the resistor has to be swapped, but uh, in the moment I'm more focused on the terminal problem we had. 10 minutes are over, still running, no problem. I didn't stop the time when the problem appeared in the beginning of the video. I've forgotten it, but I think it was 3 or 4 minutes, not more. Let it be 5 minutes. I talked a little bit and then suddenly the problem appeared. And now we have 10 minutes. And it is still nothing, but I will wait uh, uh, much more, much, much, much longer. And uh, I drink a beer meanwhile. 15 minutes, still running. Now we have 20 minutes. By the way, on the rear side here, here's the fan of the power supply and the fan is running now some lukewarm air is coming out so it's all okay the fan control works so there's no danger that the power supply is overheated could also be a problem especially when we have summer but uh, is is working correct and now 20 minutes that's yes i think that that was a problem simply a missing screw on the on a heat sink 30 minutes now 
I will stop it and uh, the second job is to replace the resistor which looks a little bit suspicious I have to buy one don't didn't find it on my stock here it's a rather uh, uncommon value I will choose a 5 watt version 68k a bigger one the problem here is obviously that not the power of the resistor is a limiting factor the power itself the nominal rating of the resistor is sufficient but the problem is the solder connection which gets hot and the solder connection is not designed for such a high power over a long time over years so the resistor will uh, i think survive the next hundred years under this condition but not the solder connection that's always a problem we have a very crowded board so the, the leads are very short and short leads means that the heat is transferred directly to the solder connection that's bad so i would uh, use a, a, a thicker resistor which gets less hot and then uh, the solder connection will last longer okay the main power supply is out i removed the bottom cover five screws and then we have access to the resistor we want to swap you see here it is roasted let me go closer to it With this resistor oops a little bit too much hey focus here is the story here is the story the music playing the solder connection is still doing well but there are signs of some halo around the pins so I will unsolder it and replace it. The R27 is out and surprise surprise it is not 68 kilo ohm as in the schematic it's only 33 kilo ohm it only has 2 watt and this resistor is mm, let me say loaded up to 100% of speci specified power a reduction to 33 kilo ohm is not a problem the current is sufficiently limited for the uh, following stages for the transistors at 320 volt maximum current will be uh, 10 milliamps or so here we can see it is not not good any longer looks roasted ah, now, it, now it gets clean ah the cap here is completely isolating the end of the resistor and here not you see this overheating of the resistor destroys the isolation it has to go to replace this original resistor which was in the 33 kilo ohms and which was heavily roasted I will take this one it has 39 kilo ohms I found it in my boxes it's not a problem I think because the original uh, design was with was with a 68 kilo ohm resistor so I think the increase from 33 to 39 kilo ohm is not a problem I don't see any other uh, changes in the, in the design so i'm sure that this will be okay there is no uh, power on it but i estimate four or five watts this has two watts so i would say five watts it's a metal film resistor by the way this is wire wound so i will replace it and then it should work the resistor is in place and now I saw another problem <coughs> this connection here this pin has no screw in it and no connection it's a ground pin it's a connection protective earth it's a connection to this aluminium heatsink which is used as heatsink and this should be grounded when the unit is completely uh, mounted and this heatsink gets in contact to the shield red is screwed on 
as this shield is connected to the case and then we have grounding, protective earth grounding. But when we flip it out and we would operate the switched mode power supply in this position, it is possible because we have here the AC line and here the DC outputs, it will work. But the big, big danger is when you have any isolation problem on this board here, for example, one of these transistors here, which are mounted on the heatsink, have a problem have a problem with the isolation. For example, that the screw which is connected to the heatsink gets in contact with the metal tap. Could happen. Then the uh, DC voltage which is on the board is connected to the heatsink. This is bad, so the connection from here to ground is missing. And it is shown in the schematic that there has to be a connection. I'm talking about this connection from the pin which has no screw in it, no connection to the ground of the chassis. Here we have the three pole power connector. One is ground, this one is ground, neutral and phase. Phase neutral ground and the ground which is connected to the chassis to the transceiver is okay, but from the chassis to the power supply this connection here is missing. It is necessary and I will rewire it. The protective earth is connected now. That's a green yellow wire. It is soldered to the ground connection protective earth on the power socket. And here it is screwed to this uh, terminal point TE2. And now when we make a check, then we have <coughs> ground connection from here to here. That's okay as it should be. Now we can do a first test. The transceiver is connected to the mains. Now we can switch it on. We have AF. It operates. So I think the work is done. I will reassemble it and do a final test. Now we are at the end of the project with the JST245. The main problem which caused some interruptions was a missing screw or a broken plastic or nylon screw on a heatsink. So the voltage regulator 7815 had no mechanical contact to the heatsink. It overheated and after some minutes the unit uh, tried to shut down and came back again. Replacing it by a metal screw was a solution. A metal screw with a isolation distance holder which is used for heat sinks in such cases. A plastic or a nylon screw is not good for this purpose because plastic gets brittle over the years when it gets hot and it will get hot on the heatsink. Otherwise the heatsink makes no sense. But the heatsink has to dissipate heat and then the screw gets also hot and plastic screws are not not good for this purpose. By the way, I've forgotten to show you that I retightened all semiconductors on the heatsink a little bit and they all were uh, grateful to have a short uh, touching with a screwdriver and all the screws which squeeze the semiconductors to the heatsink uh, needed a short tweaking only click click it was a, a fraction of a rotation a fraction of a turn but there was obviously some uh, losing tension maybe the aging over the years nearly two decades i would say caused uh, plastic to shrink when you have such an old gear always touch the heatsink and retighten the screws second problem was a resistor which uh, was still operating but uh, it had a tendency to die and I, I don't know how long it would have lasted but it was a good idea to replace it by a bigger one and the third problem was a missing ground strap uh, for the protective earth that's it. it was a nice short project i've expected more problems but i'm lucky 
so there are no more problems and the owner I'm sure is also lucky and happy. Stay healthy, stay tuned, see you on this channel.